So last week we discussed a guy named Rob Rogers. He's been a political cartoonist with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette for a long time. But his cartoons were recently censored because they were very critical of the right wing. Well, guess what? I'm sad to report this update. Today, after 25 years as the editorial cartoonist for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, I was fired. So they got rid of him. They got rid of him because he was mildly critical of the right. So uh, here's why this happened. The publisher of the paper is a guy named John Block, and then he and a guy named Keith Burris, who's now the paper's editorial director who fired Rogers, they met with Trump in 2016, and they're big-time right-wingers. And so when um, Rogers criticizes Trump and criticizes the right, they get triggered because they're snowflakes, and they decide to deplatform and censor him because he's not doing propaganda for their ideology. That's what happened. By the way, here's one of the cartoons right here. I don't know how well you could see it um, with the angle of the camera, but you see Netanyahu saying, I'm still in favor of a two-state solution. And then it shows Israel and new Israel. See, that's, uh, that's good political satire. <laughs> that's what that is. And then again, the, the cartoons that specifically got him fired, one of them was, it was like Trump... Um, snatching a child from their parents when they were crossing the border. So it said, like, danger or something like that, and Trump snatching a kid. There's another one about Roseanne Barr where it was, like, a person in a Klan outfit at the doctor's, and um, the guy in the Klan outfit is saying, maybe it's the Ambien. <laughs> and there was a bunch of them. And, like, a, so what happened was for three or four days, he his cartoons didn't appear in the newspaper. Because they censored those particular cartoons, those specific cartoons. They didn't want to show them because they're critical of the right and Trump. Um, and then, not soon thereafter, they fired him. Because he's critical of their ideology and their snowflakes. So I, ju I just want everybody to stop for a second and imagine the reverse of this. And imagine it in a high-profile sense. We're talking about the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette here, which I don't know how big of a paper it is. But imagine somebody is working at the New York Times, and they're a cartoonist. And they satirize the left. And then a left-wing editor fires them because they don't like the fact that they satirize the left and expose them and make them look silly. I would imagine you'd have an outcry, the likes of which uh, turned into a national story where people said, here we go again, the left with their deplatforming and their censorship... And um, they, they aren't willing to have a battle of ideas and philosophies and policies. The only way they could win is shutting down the other side. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Hire this man back. But no, the outrage only works in one direction when it comes to this stuff. And it really is fucking frustrating now, isn't it? Because it doesn't matter how many examples I come out here and give of right-wing censorship of the left. It's still portrayed as a uniquely left-wing issue. Where, you know, the left are the people who censor, not the people who get censored. Well, here you have a... I couldn't imagine a clearer example. And by the way, here's the crazy thing. In an attempt to counteract this uh, perception that, oh, the left is always censoring people, what have outlets like the New York Times done? Hired people like Brett Stevens, who's a fucking climate science denier, to be one of their top um, columnists. So in an attempt to be like, we don't have a liberal bias, we don't have a liberal bias, they hire a fucking litany of conservatives. So the left-wing outlets have a shitload of conservatives. And then uh, outlets like this, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, it's all right-wing, I guess, apparently, because they just fired the left-wing cartoonist. So nobody calls for like, oh, there really should be more ideological diversity at Daily Caller or Breitbart or Drudge Report. Nobody says that. Nobody demands the battle of ideas happen at the right-wing outlets. The right-wing outlets are allowed to do right-wing propaganda all day long. It's only when it's a nominally left-wing outlet that they go, ah, you don't even have any dissenting voices. Hire conservatives. So the liberal media, liberal media, ridiculous, has conservative voices and liberal voices, and the right-wing media is wall-to-wall -wall right wing. The game is rigged, man. The game is rigged. And again, all the free speech warriors are going to have fucking dick to say about this. Which is really fucking frustrating because there's nobody who's taking, a, or very few people, I should say, who've been principled in their stand in favor of free speech and free expression 
and a true marketplace of ideas, however played out that phrase is. Um, so, I just want everybody to know, the game is rigged, the outrage is not equal given similar circumstances on the left and the right, and now you know.